Mark Regev, senior advisor to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, former Israeli ambassador to the UK, is with us. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us on the programme. I wondered if I could play to you, first of all, please, Mr Regev, um, the Archbishop of Westminster, who you will know is the most senior Catholic in England, his name Cardinal Vincent Nichols. He spoke to me about the deaths of those two women in the church in Gaza that we'll talk about. L let me um, play to you, if I may, what he said, and then, please, your right of reply. It's certainly a cold-blooded killing. You wouldn't go as far as what how the Pope has described the situation, incredibly strong language um, from the Holy Father saying that it was um, a terrorist attack. Well, I'm not sure of the technicalities, frankly. Uh, this is a, the army of a state. So I, I would prefer to say it was a cold-blooded killing. And I, uh, what is so terrible is this just one example of what seem, would seem to be many, but one example that touches me deeply and one example from which we have some very objective evidence. The Israeli Defence Force says it didn't happen, wasn't there? Well, I think that's hard to believe, frankly, because uh, the people in Gaza and the Cardinal Archbishop of Jerusalem, they're not given to tell lies. So you don't believe the Israeli Defence Force? No, I don't. Mr Regev, um, good morning. How would you reply? So I would I would reject the the categorization of uh, of the words he used cold blooded killing, that would indicate a, a deliberate targeting of civilians. That's something we don't do. We don't shoot people who are going to church to pray. It just doesn't happen. Uh, that's not the way the IDF operates. That's against our rules of engagement. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened, and I would urge people not to jump to conclusions. There have been in the past all sorts of stories put out by Hamas and their supporters accusing Israel of all sorts of terrible deeds, and in the end they've proved to be wrong. And uh, uh, we're talking about a combat area. There's exchanges of fire between Israeli forces and uh, the Hamas terrorists. To say that Israel is deliberately targeting Christian worshippers, that's, that's a terrible accusation that is unfounded. Would you acknowledge, Mr Egev, that the bullets that killed these women were fired by the IDF? I do not know that to be true. Obviously, we're looking into it. Uh, uh, could they have been killed uh, by, by Palestinian terrorists who were shooting at our people indiscriminately? I don't know. Uh, but we've got to be very careful. Uh, there have been countless stories this, since this conflict began where reports out of Gaza, people are 100% sure that Israel did something terrible or this, that or the other. And in the end, it's been proven conclusively that that was not the case. And people have had to retract their words. Unfortunately, some have refused, but news organizations have had to retract reports saying, well, this was the initial reporting, but we know. You've always got a situation in Gaza where Hamas will always say it's Israel's fault. And because there's no independent civil society in Gaza, because Hamas rules in a very authoritarian way and people are afraid to, to speak out of you know, out of, outside the party line, the Hamas party line. So, of course, everyone will repeat what is being said. But, and, and then when you investigate, remember at the beginning of the conflict, Kay, there was that at the Al-Akhli Hospital in northern Gaza. You know, Israel had targeted the hospital with a missile and killed 500 people, and it wasn't Israel, and it wasn't 500 people killed, but everyone reported it. No, not everybody. Um, during, during the dialogue, I'm told, about what happened uh, in Gaza, so uh, please explain this to me, uh, this was between the Israeli Defence Force and representatives of the local community. Uh, we were told no reports of a hit on the church, nor civilians being injured or killed were raised. That's what the operational findings were of the Israeli Defence Force. So is that being re-examined now in light of what's being said? So we're always looking into these things. Uh, but there was a meeting. There are relationships and there is communication both with the, the, the heads of the churches in Jerusalem and, of course, the different churches in Gaza. It's clear they're not a target of our operation. I don't know what it's been like for them to live 16 years under Hamas's Islamist extremist terrorist regime. It can't have been easy for them. Uh, and we are communicating with them as best we can. They are caught up in a war zone, a war that Israel didn't want, a war that Israel didn't launch, a war where Israel is compelled to act to, to, to end a threat to our civilian population. And of course, we don't want to see the, 
uh, anyone, but no, not the Christians either, caught up in the crossfire between the Israeli Defence Forces and the Hamas terrorists. So you think that's what happened in this case? I, well, the truth is I can only speculate. I don't know. We have to get to the bottom of what happened. Are you investigating what happened? Of course. Of course. The Pope says it's terrorism. Once again, I think the, the Pope and the Archbishop are relying on reports that they've heard come out of Gaza. And once again, we have repeated uh, examples in the past, and I can give you more if you like, of erroneous reports that are parroted by Hamas automatically and then other people pick them up without thinking. Hamas can control because there is no independent civil society in Gaza. Hamas has the guns. People won't speak out of turn without failing, facing violent retribution. That's the, the fact of life in, in Hamas-controlled territory. So one has to be very careful with these reports, as has been, as people have learned in the past through bitter experience when they've reported or repeated these Hamas claims and in the end they've proven not to be true. So just to clarify, do you think, it, it, as far as the Israeli government is concerned, you're suggesting it might be possible that Hamas has infiltrated this, um, this church and the compound? So, uh, we have known in the past, definitely, Kay, that Hamas has, has used uh, civilian infrastructure, including holy sites, to, uh, to shield their military machine. We've seen them work out of schools. We've seen them school work out of mosques. We've seen them, of course, work out of civilian neighbourhoods. They, they, of course, embed themselves uh, routinely as part of their strategy. It's not just Israel that says that uh, Hamas uh, brutalises uh, Gaza's civilians as human shields. The UK government has said so. The United States government. The EU has said so. This is a well-known, documented uh, Hamas strategy. But you have no proof of that on this occasion, at this stage. I have proof of the strategy on this specific uh, incident. We're, of course, investigating, which is the right thing to do. Talk to me about what happened to the three Hamas hostages that were killed. The three Israeli hostages killed by, uh, held by Hamas, yes. Exactly, so this is Hamas a, hostages. You know, they, they, terrible, terrible uh, tragedy. Uh, uh, Israeli troops were in this uh, area in, in close quarters co uh, co uh, combat with, uh, with Hamas fighters, with Hamas terrorists. And these three people uh, uh, came out of a structure and they were misidentified tragically, uh, mistakenly, as, as a threat to the Israeli forces and, and they were shot and they were killed. And uh, 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 it's clear this was, a, as I say, a tragic, tragic mistake. Uh, um, the IDF uh, was immediately transparent, admitting that they'd made a mistake, notifying the families that these these uh, uh, young men had been killed by our fire. Um, uh, I, I've been in the military, and people watching this broadcast who've been in the military know that in any combat situation, especially in close quarters combat, there's always a, an ever-present danger of, of friendly fire, of what, what the experts call in the military blue on blue. This is even worse because this, these are civilians, Israeli civilians who were who are hostages, who were running away to try and find freedom and they, they were killed. So this can always happen. This has to be investigated. But the chief of staff, the highest Israeli in uniform, said that it appears what happened was against our rules of engagement, against our code of conduct in the military. Uh, what happened? But once again, we can't rush to judgment. There has to be a thorough investigation of how this happened. Whoever they were... If they were bare-chested and they were carrying a white flag, they shouldn't have been shot, should they? That's 100% correct. That's what my uh, uh, chief of staff said. He said if they were Gaza civilians, it's not only moral, uh, uh, immoral uh, uh, to shoot at them and to kill them, but he also said it's from the point of view of the war, it's bad strategy because if you can take in a prisoner, then you get information. Maybe you'll get information where hostages are or where arms depots are. In other words, they shouldn't have been shot. Once again, though... We have to wait for the investigation because we don't know what the soldiers thought or felt at the time. Yes, to what extent did they, why did they believe that they were a threat? And, and, and we have to also hear their side of the story. It was, it was a, obviously a difficult combat situation. We know that there was fighting, uh, there was a, a, a terrorist activity in that immediate area, both before and after this terrible incident. And so, once again, I've, I've been in the military. Anyone who's been in combat knows that in these sort of situations, it's very easy to, to second guess afterwards. We have to actually hear from the soldiers why they thought that these three men were a threat. Um, Mr Ambassador, finally, um, is Benjamin Netanyahu's political career over? It's just a matter of time, isn't it? 
So we're jumping from one subject to another, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Israel's a democracy. We'll have processes to see uh, what happens when this war is over, uh, uh, whether he, he can retain parliamentary support, uh, whether he can retain public support. Um, uh, uh, we've had in the past, after uh, uh, national security lapses or, or, or more, more than a lapse, what we went through on October 7th was a disaster. But uh, when we've had such things in the past and, and the most clear one that comes to light is the, the, the attack by Syria and uh, Egypt against Israel in, in October 1973, when we were also surprised and paid a very high price in blood then for that uh, not being ready. So then there was an official commission of inquiry, what you would call in uh, Britain a royal commission, independent, headed by a Supreme Court justice and former chief of staff of the military, and they did a thorough investigation, and I'm sure we'll do similar things now. Ultimately, everyone from the prime minister down through the army, through all the ranks, everyone who was involved will have to answer questions. OK. Thank you for taking the time, as always, to join us on the programme. Uh, I know you're a very, very busy man. Thank you, Mr Ambassador.